Hey there, listener. Welcome to the Deep Share Podcast. I'm your host, Andy Rouse, and for the last couple of decades, I've slowly been opening my eyes to a very different world than the one I grew up hearing about. And the more conversations I have with interesting people, the more mystifying this world becomes. So without further ado, let's get deep. We've got science to celebrate! Demons bliss out! Off your butt, Fippy! Come on! There is a rebellion in the wind. It will be crushed. Everything I've said is true, it's real. Dinosaur fossils? I'll have to put those here to test our faith. That damn lie, I, I saw them on my own eye! Did I the cues just drop sharply while I was away? We did it illusions, man! None of it is true! I'm not insane! This is mass madness, you maniac! In God's name, you people are the real thing! We are the illusion! Welcome back to the Deep Share Podcast. I am very pleased to bring to you a nice little UFO roundtable once again. It's been a while since we've done one of these, and I felt like it was necessary. There's been a lot of stuff going on in the in pop culture, in the news, in the Twitterverse, all over the place. A lot of different opinions bouncing off each other. So I figured I'd reach out to some of who I feel are the, the deepest minds in this community and uh, and see what they have to say. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce my guest tonight. I have Brandon Thomas from Expanding Reality. How the hell are you, brother? Dude, every day above ground is a wonderful day. Thank you so the fuck much for asking. Uh, I am chilling, man. Everything's going wonderful. Uh, yeah, UFOs, uh, it's just crazy right now. They're sweeping the news. It's its crazy, too, in my mind, just how the culture just, like, is like, yeah, whatever. You know, they, it's just so ignored still, even though there's, like, officials now. And we always, you know, in the disclosure community for years said that, right? All we need, and that's what the disclosure movement that Stephen Bassett and Greer and everybody was up to, was this, like, idea of, oh, well, we'll petition enough. It'll get in the news because the government comes out and says it, and then the world will know, and we'll be super pumped. Well, now the government's saying it all over the place. Um, and I think it might be twofold. I think people are super tapped into something so distracting that something this phenomenal and life-changing for us is nothing for them. But then also, and it's just not on their radar, just like something that we find to be dumb in that arena is not on our radar either. And it's just so their focus that they can't see it for what it is, which is which is whatever it is. And we'll definitely cover that probably. But then also it's like, you know, this other side of it where it's, it's really interesting to kind of see the new people coming out and talking about it. I've had some very interesting conversations with people you wouldn't think would be into this kind of stuff, and it's mm-hmm. because of it coming out in the news like this. So I think there's a lot to cover. I think there's a, a wide net we could cast with this. I'm looking forward to doing that. Brandy, good to see you. And uh, Andy, thanks again, man, for having me. This is great. Absolutely, man. You touched on a lot of good shit there, and we're going to get into all of that. And yeah, I'd like to introduce Brandy. Brandy, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, Brandy and I have become good friends on Twitter, and we just go back and forth, kind of do- dropping bombs where, where bombs need to be dropped. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Glad to have you here. What's uh, what's your general take on, on what you're seeing out there on the news and uh, you know how it's being portrayed? Uh <clears throat> Say honestly, I think it's a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> yeah, there's on so many levels. Really? We're gonna have to discuss which <laughs> scale of reality. Yeah. And, you know what I mean? It'll be fun. <laughs> yeah, I just I think it's a, I think it's just a rewritten narrative that they keep trying to see what flies and what sinks, and then if it sinks, they repackage it and try again. That's a, yeah, absolutely. That's a tactic. It seems that they've used a million times for sure. And of course we know that there's a lot going on behind the scenes, things that, you know, the people, some may know about whatever, but things that we're tapped into that have to much more to do with consciousness and our personal experiences here and how this relates to the ufo topic in general is not only important to dissect and talk about but it's also interesting to kind of talk about and get your opinions on on from that perspective 
the fact that UFOs and the UAP thing is being so popularized and so pushed and so legitimized. You know, this is like the culmination of the nerd takeover, right? And I've been down with a lot of the nerd takeover as a nerd, right? Over the past 10, 15 years, it's been beautiful. Okay. But at the same time, this is like this creepy culmination that, that that's just happening now. And it seems like it's uh, a lot of it is very contrived, for sure. Dude, absolutely. Damn, Lutely. Um, I mean, they're just so, like, like I said, so many damn ways we could take this. But, yes, to something, I mean, to the narrative aspect of it. I mean, I know that we've we've looked at this through the lens of, you know, Project Blue Beam, as Sir Jamin Ass tried to warn us about in the 90s, you know, and... And, you know, there's still some of that because there's still so many interesting things happening. But, man, there's so many lenses to view this through. You know, it, it could be this whole, like, idea of it's so popularized now because there's something happening. Or, again, to the, you know, predictive programming aspect of it, maybe we are so damn powerful right now and there's so much talk of this that by putting it in the news and putting it then in a few extra, you know, peppered into a few extra subconsciouses there, it manifests, you know, and maybe this is like something that we bring about, you know, I mean, Jacques Vallée, I know uh, Heineck, um, Terrence McKenna, even all, everybody kind of at some stage of this, they did much later, but I think that because they did, now we're able to look at it through that as well and then evolve that idea too. They all said it was a psychosomatic thing. They kind of got to this idea their most predominant idea there at the end after studying it for a long ass time was this idea that like, well, maybe it's just y'all making it up. And the more I look at and talk to people in the contact arena to where they've been contacted by things and it's always like the same thing. And again, we can go deep into this shit. It's just amazing the subjectivity of the phenomena itself. And I think what disclosure could do is cast a much bigger net subconsciously to so many more people to where it does manifest on a larger scale. You know, kind of like these tragedies or whatever, you know. Hmm. But maybe it's maybe it's something like that. But again, when it comes out and CNN and NBC News and I've got all these headlines in front of me, it's, uh, I don't know, like you, you'd think we'd be pumped. But it's like we've evolved right. to the place to where we can't be pumped. We're just like, God damn it, what are they going to do, you know? Yeah, <laughs> like, like, I want this, this to be now? cool. Don't fuck this up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. Like the, the aspect that I've always been interested in, in ufos and uap and then the, the transition into the psychedelic mind it was like okay this is so important and so central this idea of this other this other exists so far beyond just this physical arena it goes deep deep into these very personal experiences that most of us can barely really remember to relate to anyone when we come back from them and uh I mean, yeah they're, they're life changing and and i had a guy named on recently my latest episode out was with a guy named ben rosenberg and um awesome dude he goes by the handle soul Risp whisperer again very cool um just great guy you met him the other night so mm -hmm. um we we were talking about this ai thing and how c it could be like that you're like the ultimate ai right but you've got a soul and so you're kind of controlling this this you know, reality a little bit better and everybody else out there, you know, one of the things, like I said on that panel again, um, that he said that just stuck to me was that it's like every soul needs a body, not everybody needs a soul. And then it started connecting with NPCs and all this stuff and how it relates to what we're talking about here is on a level, like we all think this like idea of unity consciousness and we're big fans of this in a spiritual sense that it could be just like an, an artificial environment, which we're not opposed to the idea of ideologically anyway um it's just kind of the way that it's framed this applied to the disclosure the contact everything then it's like this is why it presents itself the way that it does is because it knows you it's your program like you chose this and you're choosing to see it in this way you're choosing to have that experience and this is why there are so many different and again uh, near-death experiences psychedelic experiences and co the contact phenomena all of them are super personal and super subjective and so to lump all of the most extraordinarily mysterious things here it's got a common element but something to like an ai or something even in an organic matrix it would still be interesting because then again it's just an augmented reality which that's all this fucking place is anyway right it's just right. augmented reality and uh but to frame it in this light i mean it's a little more prison planety and i'm not a huge fan of that being a boundless <laughs> optimist and all but um, it still brings up an extra, an interesting point to the conversation. And then how, you know, I mean, AI is, you know, is set to save us from false news. So everything we're seeing about, 
UFOs now that gets through the net is real news, right? Because it's not being censored by the AI that says you shouldn't see this. So it's all out there. It's just very, I don't know, man. I've, That's... I, my spidey sense is kind of like... I don't know. I really like where you took that because, you know, the one thing I only wrote down, I came downstairs, I was like, I'm going to write a bunch of cool bullet points for this episode. All I wrote down was synthesis of the phenomenon, psychedelic spirituality, and AI slash transhumanism. Cool. Because, of course, we have this front-facing side that, of course, a lot of us see right through, uh, framing all of these things in a specific way, and then we have the underlying things that we can pick up on more specifically. But this idea of the AI allowing only real news through what the AI considers real news, would it not be only programmed by the person that it has to pro you know what I mean? It has yeah. to come from a, from an objective, well, not ob objective, but a subjective human to program yeah. that in too. Which, which means it's a narrative. It's supposed to be there. You know, yeah. it's kind of like, I mean, Max Egan and I talked about a bunch of things on that YouTube video that got pulled. But what's interesting is all of the things we talked about came out later to be true. So you can't appeal to the AI that is YouTube and say, hey, by the way, all the things that you said were factually inaccurate, gave me a strike for and pulled this video. They're actually, here's all the documentation saying that every single thing that we talked about, minus his opinion parts, um, which weren't like... Uh, not endearing in any way, then uh, they're all right. So you're going to put the video back up and remove the strike, right? It's an AI response, and then AI pulled the video. So, I mean, and we've always asked this question, like if censored information can get through, like, and they are hiding the truth, why does David Icke get to do what he does? Why are, like, Flat Earth videos out there? You know That's what I mean? That's a very good question. It's, it's all of the, it's the fuckery, dude. What and, do they, and, like, what direction do they want us pushed in, perhaps? What do you I think, Brandy? I think they're going to roll some pretty dope fireworks out. Brandy, what do you think? <laughs> yeah. Do you, yeah, what do you think of that? They want you in every direction. That's why they, the uh, AI, everything through. I mean, if it's so smart, it knows how to steer the conversation. It knows what to drop in at that certain time. It knows the sweet spot. And it also, because we do these hashtags, it knows who to target with that sweet spot. So you're tagged. You're like, and you think you're an animal in this big ass prairie when really you're a tagged zoo specimen and they're watching you and they put the AI out there to navigate you to the right trough. Right. Really? Like, it, 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 it came to me today that I was like, you know, the concept of being alien, I think is with us from the very, the very moment we're born because mm. Oh, a little closer to the mic, Brandy. We can hear you. <laughs> we feel very alien. And so if they're going to ex exploit anything, it's going to be to your sensitivity. They're going to appeal to your sensitivity. So I think injecting this, oh, there's aliens out here, is very appealing to us because on that level, we do feel very alien. And now they're taking it to the point, well, aliens are bad, which we see this all the time. Everything is our fault. So for them to say, well, aliens are going to take over the world, they're essentially putting in our minds that, again, it's our fault, we're bad. Wow. Yeah. You're absolutely right. And, and I mean, AI controls your life now. There was this couple, and we've all seen the videos of people that do like this. They don't even have a cat at all. And they'll say something about, like, oh, we should get a cat, we should get a cat, whatever. And they say it a few times, and they start getting ads on every single profile <laughs> For cat food and it's like they don't even have a cat at all but every single one and so it's it's like this but to a huge fucking level right and i mean hegelian dialect has worked for i don't know as long as they say history has been around so why wouldn't they you know prepare you mentally for something like this um create the problem you know and then offer a solution in the form of klaus anal schwab's you know one world whatever wet dream this hitler wet dream shit um but you know and something else that's kind of alarming about the you know, headlines, if you will, all of it military. I don't know if you guys have noticed that. Every single thing says U.S. Pentagon military, uh, this Navy officer, this, it's always framed together. And I think that that narrative is very important for the ultimate narrative. And I think it says a lot. It's not, you know, the stories of like, 
now that things are out in the news, we went out and talked to, you know, Whitley Strieber. We went out and talked to some people and, you know, um, we got their stories because now we're very invested in this idea of this contact. And there's actually turns out these motherfuckers are running all around, getting snatched up all over and coming back and talking about it. And they'll just talk to you. And it's it's this, though, you know, it's the. It's got the fear automatically because the military is involved, you know, psychologically, it's going to be, you know, embedded in there. And the, I, I know I've talked about this before, but I think it's important to kind of get into, and it, I, I don't mean it to be kind of like an insult to the UFO community at large, but it's a community that we're all kind of a part of or adjacent to. And it's like, there's so much Stockholm syndrome going on, watching everyone, just kind of bow down to these opinions and un honestly as like amateur journalists whatever you want to call us like it's totally cool that you know a lot of us have gotten to speak to a lot of these military personnel and government people that could definitely shine a light whether it's between what they're saying or what they're saying you know what i mean yep, yep. it's definitely opportunity to be had um but I think overall, I'm personally seeing a lot of faith being put back into the system through the community yeah. that I was just speaking about has had a slow takeover of culture, which is nerd culture, right? We just became the ultimate target. And it doesn't seem like this is the only category, but this does seem to be the the hurting. It you seems like the UFO, uh, whatever's going on in the UAP event catalog <laughs> is uh or the pamphlet <laughs> is kind of like it really is more of the central focus it's when the movie picks up speed yeah. near the end of the film right this is your movie that's the best part like if you just keep that in mind like <laughs> yeah, really is it independence day is it close account what are you what are you doing like how do you it's feel a brand about new it? thing where they come down they only want to land and talk to me and then i'm able to get them on the show <laughs> And we talk and I get that. That's first brilliant. Look. Yeah. And then and then we get to talk and I just have an awesome conversation about just everything. And let's just, you know, and I, I won't believe a word they say. Don't worry about it. And I uh, that it'll be great. So I, I don't know, man. It it's it's just I wild. hope that maybe we can manifest that to happen for go. Maybe it's my, you know, it's reality right? lines on it. it. <laughs> Everybody well, just hope go. that it's a like a friendly species that comes to visit him. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. Just come on down. Just sit down for like an hour. I'll I'll just chat with you and then you can like laser me or whatever yeah fuck it even if you're a 12 foot reptilian just reach out to us come on down i want to i want to talk to all of them because then that would what what that would do inadvertently is you only need to get one alien species on and if there are multiple they would want their voices to be represented as well and so they'll be coming by and then you know i'll pass them your email and then we'll just get them on the circuit here and that would be the way <laughs> to do this thing and just hear their side of the story and then sit back and just talk about it. Like, that would be awesome. Let's definitely manifest that. Dude, this sounds like the way it's going to go through the narrative. <laughs> like, eventually, yeah. maybe 25 years down the road when, you know, all the politicians have completely taken over, like, podcasting and or something like, like that. Fife They'll Symington. have aliens on. Do you, do you remember Fife Symington? 1997, the... Uh... God, that sounds familiar. Arizona. Is that Phoenix Lights guy? Phoenix Lights, thank God. Yeah. Yes. He Whenever he traded his... that fucking alien yeah. out, you know, in, in yeah. handcuffs, and he, like, totally renounced and regretted it later. He was like, I actually went out to a park and saw the damn thing, and it was, like, like incredible, and I was scared and all that. And so, yeah, it would be something like that, though. They'd be like, yes, we have found an alien species. And it'd be like the goddamn lunar lander, you know, with, like, duct tape and shit on it. And, like, we could see multiple shadows, guys. I mean, hopefully they've stepped their game up a little bit. But you know it's the government. So this shit goes to the lowest bidder, you know what I mean? They got, yeah. like, a cousin in, in the oil field that can do this for, like, 20 bucks. And he's going to get the contract and just yep. spend it all on coke. So, um, yeah, that's that, that revolving uh, door between agents, you know, private agency and uh, and the government, you know, yeah, the corporations. The government. it's going to yeah. be private for sure that it's it's such a joke. This. It's so funny. So, yeah, you know, I mean, we'll I, get I don't stay know. Puff. That's What's that? that? We'll get that's yeah. What they, yeah, we'll get that motherfucker. And that'd be fine. Like, a, that's a jolly, squishy death. And I'm you okay know, I never thought about that scene in Ghostbusters. That is super like manifesty. Oh huh? yeah, he manifested. Damn. They swear they were like clear your mind. Yeah. Goes with the Gozarian. Good evening. I just wanted to say that on the air once. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> we would get just the Kardashians' ass, and it would squish around. It would be like 
huge and that's what because it would be the mass populace right i mean right. that rocket contest we talked about this where they they let the public name a rocket and they named it rocky mcrocket face and that they had to put that on the damn register and send it off you know they spent 80 billion whatever dollars on this goddamn rocket <laughs> and they let the public name it and then they named it rocky mcrocket face and so it would be some shit like that and that's why they keep <laughs> it to themselves to be honest with you i empathize with a little bit of it i get a little bit of it so that kind of leads me like into you assholes. You're hilarious asshole. <laughs> <laughs> the next thing I wanted to kind of ga gauge your opinions on is like how much of what we're seeing from these sources is legit, and how much do you think is so? Like what I what I mean by that is like the military personnel. Some of these guys could be great actors but i mean you know i i really love studying people and there's a lot of these guys that just seem like regular people and of course i'm into the idea of compartmentalization and not everybody has to have the need to know and all that to certain levels of this agenda or whatever but yeah i don't know these guys a lot of times seem like real people witnessing real events so is it all military craft is it like what? What do you guys personally think? What do you lean towards? Either one of you. I want to hear a Brandy. Thing. Brandy, go first. Make sure you're close to that mic. <laughs> well, I was going to say, being a veteran of ah, the military, yes. I can tell you right now that you're. They're not going to talk about it. They're not allowed to talk about it. And if you do, it doesn't matter if you're out retired. They're going to take your pension. They're going to throw your ass in Leavenworth. So. These people that come out and they're all in their little face, you can guarantee this person was created in order to put out their script and make that the truth because they use the military because people think, okay, they're an authority figure. It's not right. the government, it's the military. And it's like, no, stupid, they're one and the same. Right, it's our boys from home. Yeah, yeah exactly. the oligarch lead then, leading the damn thing. But I can tell you, no, I'm, I'm sorry. If you come out here in plain face, one, you know, your media bandwagon saying, oh, you know, this is what we've seen and this is how we've seen it. And they cover it, you know, the whole perimeter. You're lying. You're lying because your ass will be locked up so quick. Your retirement will be gone. Everything. It's That's just, an angle we don't hear often. Right. Yeah, and it's it, like. I and it's, my friends and, you know, just for proof of it so they could say the same thing because. Where I was stationed at, this whole Nimitz situation, the Nimitz reported to us. And I've had friends on the Nimitz. So I was like, I'm going to ask, hey, if this happened and they told you not to talk about it, what would happen? And they're like, I know stuff now that has nothing to do with aliens that I can't talk about. I can't even tell my wife. Hmm. So I'm going to call BS. Wow. That's interesting because, like, they always use this whole, you know, the retired, you know, out of the military, this and that. And then sometimes they don't. Like, is Louis, Lou Elizondo is an interesting character more than people give him credit for because it's like, is he, is he still military? Is he not military? What is going on there? Is he now you're a military, military contractor? Yeah. I'm sure isn't that Dave right, Brandy? You're always military. Uh, I can tell you that as soon as you bring up Lou, I'm going to say boo because. <laughs> is a paid actor and he knows it um you don't get recruited by the cia for being a model citizen at in high school i'm sorry you're counterintelligence you're a liar you've been proven to be a liar um so for you to come out and say you're going to tell on the government when you are the government yeah I'm with you. This one's an easy one to see through, to be honest with you. I'd still have a conversation with the guy, but I'll be honest. I think anybody out there like anyone like that, um, Fravor, anyone, um, they're, they're all supposed to be there. You're supposed to hear that story. It's, it's yeah, supposed yeah. to be out. I agree, and sometimes I don't want to, like, yeah, because I know. you get. So, I love movies, it's man, tough. and these are our best actors. You yeah. know, the Brad Pitt's like, good. But oh, this is such a cool story. Oh, it's unbelievable how Fuck. cool it is. This is the yeah. best one of all the sci-fi movies. It, it, this is the one that's ticking off all the boxes. You know, it, it's pretty interesting. But even Fravor talked about um, the the disturbance under the water. That's kind of brushed mm -hmm. over. You know, in most of the accounts or whatever, they'll talk it, but they don't. They don't ask as many questions as I want to on it. 
Right. And so one of the interesting parts about it is, you know, this bubbling underwater, and he said tube and cylindrical like, right? And this could be one of a, a goddamn anything, right? But one of the things it makes me think of is, you know, the cylindrical shaped, like cigar shaped uh, UFO craft that are reported, right? These larger, we would refer to them as like a mothership because they have these little, you know, baby ships that come out of them in the form of a tic tac or whatever, right? Or it was like a goddamn Russian or Chinese submarine, and that was a like super secret aircrafts because if they're working with us they're working with everybody you know it's like the antarctic treaty like i think the aliens goals whatever has whatever dominant species of ultra terrestrials is what hal put off called it in his paper so I, I like that it's any of it right it covers interdimensional extraterrestrial all of it so ultra terrestrial and uh you know if they're coming here doing this stuff then it's probably more likely that we're like a resource or prison planet kind of idea and I'm not a huge, again, not a huge fan, but a lot of roads lead back that way. But a lot of roads lead the other way, too. But I'm just a, interestingly it's, enough, it's ideological, you know, more than like, oh, I can see that. And um, but yeah, so it, it seems that like if they're all playing a role here, if, you know, people get abducted all the time, people, you know, um, all of that, then it's probably they're probably all in cahoots and stuff. You know what I mean? Because, mm. you know, like Jim Mars's book, Fourth Reich, I don't think Nazis lost. They just kind of took over everything. And just kind of run the damn world now. And then you have the Tataria element as well. And so it's like these ancient kingdoms that are under new names that we call them now. And that's what it feels like. And, and it definitely feels like the extraterrestrial phenomena, whatever it is, plays a role in that, in a large role in that. Um, mm -hmm. And I think it's something, you know, much deeper than we're ever going to find out. But they're going to put on a good light show, I think, with some shit that they've got. And I think well, that there is going to be, like, some sort of staged invasion. I'm looking forward to it, to be honest with you. You know, I was talking about... Mix um, it up. Talking about uh, Admiral Byrd last night on uh, Infinite Rabbit Hole. Hell yeah. With those guys. And I was saying how the 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 journal, the diary of Admiral Byrd, this very controversial diary that talks about you know giant white aryans with grapes the size of your head and this inner earth kind of situation now me being interested in box saga the these lines cross very easily this anunnaki box saga aryans this closing off the system keeping the family the way it is like that's kind of goes all the way back to the saga in some ways so it's really interesting to see these themes the thing about the diary is that as far as i've ever been able to look that diary is one the stuff about the inner earth was either never really in it or the family denies it completely and everyone that's seen it denies it yeah. i don't even know where that rumor started I can't find a source, but also the fact that there is a controversy surrounding the actual diary of Admiral Byrd anyway, and it has nothing to do with aliens. It's the f possibility that in his wording, in his nauti nautical descriptions, he actually did not reach the North Pole. So it's interesting that we have that layered onto that. I know there's a little bit of a tangent, but it kind of ties ties into what we're saying. You know what I mean? It, absolutely. And then the extra land that he talked about, larger than North America and untouched by any man, is what he said in that interview. He in, did. In, in an interview in his own words. So that wasn't even in his diary. So that, stuff like that is what's so awesome. Um, but, you know, you'll get, um, you know, thrown out of a window of a sixth floor of a psychiatric <laughs> facility if you, um, you know, come out with that stuff. <laughs> Uh, Kiho, Kiho, and so uh, but... I've always maintained. No, sorry to cut you off. I've always yeah. maintained that I've watched that video a million times of him saying those words, and yeah. I'm like, I swear to God, he's just talking about Antarctica. I think maybe, and <laughs> I, I mean maybe, but whenever he talks about temperature difference of like 70 degrees and stuff, and like the un, you know melted um, fresh waters, uh, that is a know, little. Um, well, is that when he? I don't remember him talking about that in any video. Sorry, there, go ahead. Yeah, no, there's an uh, there's one little clip of him talking about unexplainable open areas of lush green grass and fresh water hmm. <clears throat> okay. in the poles. He does. There is a clip of that. It's very hard to find. And now I'm wish I'm, I would have screen grabbed all this shit, but I didn't. Someone uh, but, screen grab it. Grab it and send it to me, please. Expanding reality podcast dot com. Uh, <laughs> and <clears throat> but that whole story with Birdman and everything about that, it just it fascinates the shit out of me in New Schwabenland and like the Nazis and all of this stuff. Like it's one of the best stories ever. It's it's just awesome. And why is it like if it 
is if it's possibly not true, like that part about oh. him getting dragged into the inner earth. If that part's fabricated, why is it fabricated? And why yeah. is it why is it pushed to the truth community, the conspiracy theory you community? Know, it, so it could be a couple of things. So whenever we look at the something like the the C thing that happened, can we just talk about COVID? Can we just say it? Okay. COVID. <clears throat> so that thing that happened. It, don't it say monkey. Like, you can't say monkey anymore. Okay. Well, that that's off limits now. Got it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so with that whole thing, there's there like a layered thing that was going on there, right? There was the narrative that we all saw through immediately and said bullshit. And there was another sub-layer over that that did call bullshit on the first one, but also it had a shitload of disinformation woven within it with the monkey uh, thing, the bat thing, all that kind of shit. And so that a lot of people just clung to and said, yep, I'm stopping here. I got my answer. But really it's like there's levels above that, and even those have disinformation woven in within them. And I think just the realization of that right there, that you're going to get to another level where you're like yep got it figured out but man that's planned and so are your next 12 steps and that's just how smart this bitch <laughs> is you know what i mean but i think now we have a vantage point to kind of see it that way this also too relates though to antarctica to the bird story i mean maybe this type of disinformation tactic of you know two truths and a lie but you know very flaky or whatever you know it seems to have occurred quite a bit in our in our just recent history especially with the phenomena you look at like what happened with roswell they put out immediately flying disc down in roswell new mexico it's actually yeah. corona no big deal but anyway right and and so they like you know did that and then immediately retracted it right so what they did was again it's kind of like what they're doing now with the news they put this in the psyche and they're oh my goodness Martha did you hear and you know now they're talking about fucking flying saucers and shit and you know now it's on the mind and then they retract it and then you know a little bit later something else comes out I mean this is right around Kenneth Arnold this is you know the the golden era this is also I mean, fucking when uh, Air Force was established, so like all of this crazy shit was happening at this time. But even in our recent past, you can see where news would come out real quick and then be retracted or it'd be phrased in a certain way and then go, maybe that's it. And then like, that's it. You know, it's like they flash you real quick. You right. Know? Subliminal like, message. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh. All right. That's all you get. But that's the thing is it's it's like this little tease. And but there's like bullshit wrapped within all of it. And I think that at, at least if you can be honest with yourself and say that you can at least half look at it like that, then you're all right. I think you're going to be OK. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. We're going to fucking make it. But Antarctica, then maybe uh, there's no inner earth and they fake the inner earth thing because it is flat and it's a realm and you can't go beyond <laughs> that thing. And so they tell you. Uh, it's there's a hollow earth. I mean, no, which then solidifies in any conspiracy person's mind because I love Agartha. I love the hollow earth shit. Oh, yeah, yeah. So much fun. And then now, though, you're like, okay, well, it's hollow, so therefore it must be a sphere floating in space because now it's hollow. And then you see those videos of them in space, like spinning um, sediment, and then it like forms a hollow. Have you seen that with like a crust yes. on the outside? Okay. So then there's like scientific proof, right, of the theory that was planted but then retracted real quick. And so now you have, like Brandy said earlier, it's shot in a fucking thousand directions. That's the whole point. You know, now you have everybody loving Flat Earth, which is big, or um, Hollow Earth, which is a big fan. Love Flat Earth, big fan. I'm a fan of all of it. I hope all of it's right. fucking true. And, right, the bottleneck. Um, <laughs> yes, but that's the thing. It may be, again, type of a level of disinformation because they're like, oh, yeah, it is hollow. I mean, no, it's not. And so you're like, well, it can't be flat if it's hollow. And so you turn away from that altogether, and they're like, Whew, got it. You know, we saved ourselves for a little bit. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Brandy, what are your thoughts? What are you thinking? Well, I think the more, you know, the more they throw out, the more division they can create. But, you know, like every topic, this is how I look at it. Every topic is this huge forest. You have the trunks and you have what they throw out, which are the, the branches, the stems, the leaves, the acorns, the pine, everything. But what you don't see is the root system of, of all of it. And then what we know and what other people, you know, kind of don't look at is this root system, it's all connected. They are all the same tree. You're just looking at it from the top up. And when it comes to like this inner earth, I mean, if regardless of what shape it was, as far as, you know, being flat, but it's flat round, oh, it's flat, but it's flat oval. Inner would just be like, you're moving inner. Outer's just, you're moving outer. Yeah. You know, and if there is a what they want to call hollow, well, if everything as far as energy is a toroid, hollow, you're just going through the middle. Right. And that, right. 
Because the flat Earth realm, nothing explains what's underneath this. You know what I mean? It, if it's flat and an expansive plane, okay, well then maybe there's some sh a lot of shit underground, like a hamster cage, you know? And like the, <laughs> yeah, and the hollow Earth and exactly dimensions, because portals exist in in these types of places. There are people. I saw something recently in the Ancient Aliens clip where homeboy walking through the a cave and he was just like, yeah, hey, yeah. There's a portal that occurs all the time. I've seen a dude like walk across the cave and just walk into a wall and just disappear like a physical human being that he interacted with, not a spirit, not a specter, nothing like that. And so there's like weird shit like that, dude. I mean, and it's all over the fucking place. And maybe that's what these levels are. Maybe we're living, you know, because one of the cleverest things I ever heard somebody that was um, talking about Hollow Earth said, he goes, well, yeah, you live on the inside of the earth. It's like living on the roof of a house. Like, why would you do that? We live on the roof of the house, basically, is what they were saying. Like, it's mm. super nice inside and like climate controlled and like your cats can get on the furniture and shit. It's awesome. And it's like this whole dope thing. So I don't know, man. It's, it's wild. <laughs> You know, because of my obsession with, like, fractal geometry, I always try to take the Earth and try to compare it to something else, but the you can't do it because everything that you could compare it to is something that you've interacted on the Earth, you know, with on the Earth itself. So you can't really take it to that scale. But, like, you know, that is a useful practice to do, to see the similarity between things and where on the scale they are kind of if, I, okay. if you're picking up what i'm putting down i'm smelling well, what you're stepping in yeah <laughs> and you can't see it like you can't really take in the earth you can't i mean no. they won't let you and so you can't form your own conclusion about it so you're left held hostage to cognitive hostage to whatever they tell you it is unless you think for yourself and then you know we know how that goes and i'm fine with it that's great and the guy that got closest recently didn't he like crash land or blow himself up in the rocket he like built his own rocket to like prove or disprove flat earth or something like that yeah well he didn't go very far but yeah he he went up and then it like smashed but like these people have been talking about and i've had david weiss on the show you know i'm open to the yeah, idea i don't know what the fuck's going on to be clear for the audience i have no fucking clue but <laughs> i i do ask a lot of questions but like Weiss said, all they need to do is one simple thing. You take one airplane, go that way. One airplane, go that way. They know the math. They know the miles. They should meet up. He goes, but the problem is they won't do that because even in Magellan's logs, it took him like 60,000 miles or something to go around Antarctica, which is the exact circumference if you lay it out on a flat map. And like he, you know, took some detours. He hung out and did some shit. And, um, but yeah, it's weird, man. All the shit's weird. That's it. And with NASA doing the fuckery, I mean, it means deceiving Hebrew people. Come on. You know what I mean? Like, wake up. It's a... You know you know what's interesting about that, that 60,000 miles is that um, I, I wish I could pull it up, but it would probably take way too long. I think I posted it on Twitter a while back. It was the full article about that trip and all of his notes and everything and this big controversy because this 60,000 miles – was actually again we have this like normie controversy yeah. which yeah. reveals like kind of a, an answer to the controversy we talk about in the deeper realms where this 60,000 miles was like a conflation or something and uh, I can't remember the details but it was it was controversial on a very normie level but it had nothing to do with going just around Antarctica it was his entire trip yeah. which also included a lot more distance in other parts of, I can't remember exactly, but um, near Argentina or somewhere else, it, it covered a 60,000 mile. You know, it's interesting whether that was planted. I don't, I don't know, but yeah, there like was a diary, controversy. Yeah. There was a controversy in the mainstream that made the 60,000 mile thing, not, an area of focus does that make sense where yeah, it's like absolutely. no Not one were to, no one were to look at that mainstream controversy and go well hey they're arguing about that the fuck is this sixty thousand miles around antarctica shit yeah it wasn't it wasn't that because this sixty thousand miles was marking a much larger route that yeah. he had taken I knew so he like, went up and shagged some natives and stuff, but Probably. I didn't know it was like that far. I didn't know it <laughs> accounted for that much mileage of an offset. I could be reading part of the script, man. I don't know. But, yeah. you know, I do find it interesting that it's very much like, you know, you, the, the hail hydra thing. Again, you cut yeah. one head off and three go, grow back. The closer we are to this very dense reality, the more random it becomes. And the, 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 it's like trying to grasp onto water, you yeah, know, yeah, you can't. So it's like, that's, this is why all the fucking snakes get away with everything. It's almost like it's built into the system, this deception 
not even oh God, yeah. like on a natural level it almost seems i don't know maybe that's a little weird no fuck yeah <laughs> i've got a crazy fun theory if you want to hear it i'm just been oh, kicking I do. Around. it's so much fun it's of course ridiculous and so here we go <laughs> so what i what i think it could be is that maybe like this idea of timelines and all of that kind of stuff you know where there's these multiple timelines the idea goes from a singular person's perspective whenever you go to a fork in a road and you can go left or right or whatever the you that went right in another dimension immediately splits off in the same identical universe and just chooses to go left just to kind of play it, you know, play it out and see how it goes. So you're like the control and then they have another sample as well. And then that one, every time it makes a decision, it branches off and does the same thing. And you do this at infinitum throughout every single decision, every glance that you make when you could have glanced there, 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 some other reality, all of them did that. Right. And so in a way, this splinters off and creates all these fucking timelines that allegedly all of us are having by ourselves, but really there's a consensus reality illusion woven into all of it, right? So if you're talking about all these fucking timelines, perhaps what could be happening, and here's the fun part, is, is that all of those have been just collapsing, you know what I mean? And But in those timelines, you're still going to, so the way that I visualize it is you've got like a line down the middle of linear time, let's say, and then on the right side, like a color spectrum from not so bad or pretty close or whatever to the ultimate bright light, love, happiness, everything you can get version of yourself or your reality, which keep it singular so it's easier. So it's your, the highest fucking self you can get. But on the other side of that neutral line, it's the lowest fucking version of you. You know, every one of them's like just been the, the shittiest things you could ever think of, and that's that. But perhaps what we could be experiencing and maybe what these cycles are is if we picture expansion like that, like all of our choices go in densities like that. They're like they extreme out and then breathe back in, right, and can swell and contract like the universe wants to do. So let's say maybe what these cycles could allude to or be an indicator of is that all of the timelines of the extremes are collapsing into one another. Now, another thing to think about on that is, is that in all of those timelines, everything is true that's opposed to something on the opposite scale. And this could be why we look around today and there's like experts don't agree on anything. You can't find verification for your observation. No two contactee you know, experiences are the same. Like everything's so all over the board. I could Google right now the top doctor what should should I eat eggs? And they're like, yeah, eat them every day. They're fucking great for you. No, it's awesome. And then the next top doctor, who they're equally ranked and just as accredited, says never fucking eat eggs. What are you talking about? Like, never do that. And it's like, so there are so many, you know, and um, what is it? It's called dichotomy when two conflicting ideas exist in the same place at the same time. And this perhaps could be, again, this is just fun. I just have fun thinking about it. An indicator that all of the timelines are collapsing. And this is why also things are so crazy, so extreme, because there's like nowhere to hide any of the bullshit anymore. All the things that weren't veiled in another universe are now unveiled here and vice versa. Like we're seeing a bunch of crazy shit. Our sun's fucking different. The moon's tilted. Like time's Earth's fucked speeding up. Off. The earth is, yeah, whatever's happening is happening crazy, right? And you're seeing all of these tremendous things that could just be commonplace in another version of reality, right? But because all of them are merging back to one or like unity consciousness or this bottleneck point of expand new, then, then creating new expansion and awareness to fill a new container of awareness, whatever, then maybe that's what's going on. You know, and this is why, again, we see all this crazy bat shit extremes and everything, but also these, yeah, I could see how that works, but yeah, I could also see how that works. And like, dude, solid. yeah. You you just blew my mind. I'm really loving this this concept. I think it can go places. I'm thinking immediately again, <laughs> fractals, right? Because yeah. you oh yeah. You, no matter how much multiplicity happens within this structure that you're 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 putting forth here, uh, it's always binary. Yeah. No matter every choice is still binary. The, no matter uh, how complicated it gets, it's still just right. built off binary choice. What Brandy? What do you what are your thoughts on this theory? I'm going to expand on Brandon's Hello. thoughts. Yeah, yeah. P.S. I love Southern people. I love you, Brandy. All right, go ahead. <laughs> she told me she had a Southern accent. I got even more excited. I'm like, oh, yeah? Sweet. Oh, beautiful. Voice of an angel right there, by the way. I love <laughs> that accent. Anyway, go ahead. So my thought about it is that we are different. We're com a combination of all these different elements, you know, like all the, how they try to push the astrology at us. Don't get me, but the astrology, we are combined to these different elements and every dimension has, you know, a different like pH level. 
And so when us in our journey start evolving or going, like you said, towards the light or towards the dark and making these decisions, what, what they do is like, we would have to move up or down in dimensions to keep that dimension stable. And so what looks like to us synchronicities um, or, you know, conflict and stuff is just like being at the eye doctor and them changing the lenses. It's like, do you see it clear now? Do you see it clear now? So the more clearer you see it, the further up you're, you're getting or the more fuzzy, you know that, okay, I'm going back down. And so we're always moving up and down to try to keep the stability in the dimensions. And it's not really about us. It's really about just keeping these dimensions stable enough that we keep continuing as a civilization or keep evolving as this creation. And then us creating as we go is just keep, it just expands further further and it's like a never ending expansion of Dude, replication that was beautiful i love it it ties into one of the most primordial questions we have you know it's like why why this need to keep going well you know no matter how much nihilism is out there no matter how much predictive programming is put out there within every story is this desperation to go on and it's in every one of us and of course that extends way beyond our very human experience like what are we part of what is this thing you know uh, machine or natural machine whatever you want to however you want to look at it you know it's clearly keeping something going and I know we've kind of branched way outward on the scales away from specifically UFO, but that's totally fine. Cause as we always say, it's all connected here. And these other facets like AI and transhumanism and the way we're kind of being coaxed into or herded along is a, of course a traditional and much more appropriate term for it. Just herded along towards this very particular future. Many have wondered if it's, actually beneficial at the very end of it and we're the confused teenager you know just rebelling what, what are your thoughts on that because of course on one level it's very nefarious in, in our faces but again the closer we come to it the more random it becomes the less um you know the more heads you got to cut off and the more grow back you know so what do you guys think of that it could be, uh, I want to tie that together, and I didn't mean, I meant to, but I didn't, so I'm going to. But what I'm thinking is, is on this, that it could be something that's where it's like, they want to kind of take the phenomena from such a wide scope. Because if we're talking about interacting with you consciously, and obviously there's a narrative here to put it out for you guys to marinate on and, and have in, in the chamber ready to go for whatever reason, whether that manifests in life or whatever. But let's say that because there are so many different versions of what E.T. is, that maybe they just kind of want you to focus on one version of it, meaning that maybe it's one race that comes here, one race, if they're staged or not, it doesn't matter. And they come down and they just are one face, they're the typical grays, and that's it. So then maybe they can give this thing a name and give it a face to where it rules out everything else. So like, yeah, we heard about aliens. It's right there. It's, it doesn't look anything like a human. It doesn't look anything like this almond eyed thing or whatever. It's just a little gray thing. There's no mantises. You're crazy. The, the government's already told us. We saw it on the TV. And so maybe it's to focus everybody's energy on one version of the story. You know what I mean? Mm. Perhaps. Uh, and it kept to cap it back in when all the timelines collapse. Perhaps in, in one of them or a predominant amount of them, maybe towards the edge, UFOs are just predominant. They're just everywhere. And so as the timelines collapse, now we are finding ourselves immersed and just swimming now in a new reality that's just, yeah, UFOs are here. What's, what's the big deal? Like, it's no big deal. And maybe that's why the public doesn't give a shit about it is because the public's mind, the NPCs, I think I'm onto something here. I just thought of this. The I NPCs mind too. kind of gauge to the gauge to the reality, right? So they're going to go with the narrative no matter what. Right. So they're already geared to just not give a shit about UFOs, whatever. And so therefore it makes it even more puzzling to us because it is so fantastic. But also to them, they're just like, yeah, whatever. There's no freak out here. Because again, maybe in this reality, whatever's going on, we've merged into one where they're finally, yeah, they're running around, you know. And perhaps as the universe is merged, we merge with them. And there's like nowhere to hide, if you will. You know what I mean? Everything's just here. Well, also in the pred predictive programming method is always the outcome is always that 
you know, you go from that would never happen to, of course, that's <laughs> happening. What are you yeah. talking about? Why would you question it ever? Yeah. You know, so it's all it's not that they don't give a shit because I mean, in some ways, yes, you're right. They the right. public doesn't. However, on another level, I wouldn't say it's just the fringe anymore that yeah. has just been like, oh, cool. So all my childhood fantasies, I I get to believe in again. All yeah. right. Cool. E.T., all right. You know what I mean? I feel Absolutely. like it's kind of going that way with fucking, what was it, Gary Nolan was just on, on Tucker Carlson. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Talking about, I don't know, like, again, Brandy would say that, I don't know, he's a medical doctor, right? He's not, I can't remember what he is. Ooh, I don't know if he's military or not. He may still be a paid actor, though. I don't know. They They're all could all be. But th that's know the weird part, too. Real. Like, the further we get into this community and the more shows we do and the more we know and, the you know, the more connections we make, it's like, at what level do suddenly we become controlled opposition? Like, I, I you know what I mean? That's the problem with you know, a lot of personalities that I've been following for a long time. Like, goofy little John Greenwald running his crappy website 15, 20 years ago is Mr. fucking FOIA now, you know? He calls up, they, you know, they have John on speed dial at the at the uh, Air Force, you know? So it's like, ah, it's, I don't know, it's weird. It, it doesn't, it, it doesn't, again, it's like controlled opposition really doesn't have to be knowledgeable about their part in any of it. I guess maybe that's the angle. I, I don't know. What do you guys think? Brandy, what do you think of what I I've just I've thought said? so much about this. I'm like, man, you know, because they start calling people shills and all that kind of stuff. And it's yeah. like, at what point do you become that? You know, is that inevitable? I don't think so. I think that if you are that controllable, then you were going to go that way anyway. And that's also why you're in the spotlight, for the most part, for the current paradigm. You know, that's, that's, fair. that's rapidly changing, and we're, we're exposing quite a bit here. And again, there's nowhere to hide, so it's, it's, it's just changing. And at what so, point are we all one anyway, and how much of this nefariousness is just our dream fighting back because we became aware that we were in a dream? You know, it's very Inception-like, right? It's like it starts fighting back against us. There's so much to that. And I've thought so hard about like the, maybe, you know, the Mr. Smiths have it right. You know, maybe those are the ones. I think we talked about this. On right. The that was great. I love that. And maybe there's like, ben. maybe that's like the real way. And that's the true evolve thing. And the, the like dumb thing to do here, the waste of time here is the approach that we take. You know, maybe I, I, again, I don't, I don't <laughs> think so. I don't feel like that, but a new soul wouldn't feel like that. Right. Or I, I that love that, that man. And Category. the Mr. Smith thing is great because, like, think about it. We loved The Matrix, and that was the rebellious movie put out by Hollywood, right? And, you know, Rage Against the Machine, you know, the rage on behalf of the machine is the closing act of Wake Up. Yeah, but you got to get Matrix, a shot to go right? see him now. When you look at that whole thing, you, you're looking at a savior of the system. You're not looking at Mr. Smith, who's trying to get the fuck out of the system. That was mind blowing. I, I pay a lot of attention to that character because that dynamic, if you think about it, in the in the uh, dualistic world that we live in, you're every version of everything, right? So again, going back to that scale, you are Mr. Smith. You know, you are Baphomet. You're both. It's all mm. both. It has to be. There's versions of you out there. You're just consciously tuned into the frequency of the version of you that we fucking love, right? And people love your piece of shit version too and the other realities, and that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like with this Mr. Smith idea, yeah. yeah I mean, I, I, I've thought about that scene so many times when he's like, uh, you know, licking the sweat off Morpheus's head, not for that reason, but because <laughs> he's, uh, you know, talking about that he can't stand it anymore. He just wants out. And yeah. if you think about a control system or a simulation, even one that knows it's a simulation and knows it has the job there at that level, it would become so goddamn stir crazy and just want out that it would find a way out. You know, and so then, then those ideas that like Area 51's the way out, you know, or these like subterranean caves, or maybe Alaska's the way out, all of those kind of things, like that's that's trippy to me. But this, of course, the opposite would want to do that, and this is maybe why the balance exists because we have such a drive and a pull and a passion to go the direction that we want to go for humanity, and they have the same in the polar opposite energetic direction. So it seems like, again, it's engineered this way. Like the carrot is on the stick from the system, but it's pulling us in both directions because that's, you know, maybe it's jerking off God's balls in both directions. Like who knows like what the source of this energetic loop is, but it's necessary and it's motivated by the same drive that we are. So it's like, you know, you almost like empathize with it because again, at a level, we're all the fucking same thing and all those lizard turds are you and there is shit <laughs> versions of you in other realities and you've been a shit version in this one. So it's like all this like... 
I don't know, again, at a level, man, it just feels like that it, it is just this, you know, play or whatever. But, yeah, you just chose your hat. It's like Westworld. When we walked in here, we wanted white hats. And so that's what we got this round. Mm. But the black hats are crushing it, you know. They're doing great, and they're playing the shit out of their role because that's their job. They're really committed to their roles like we are. Right. Anyway, that's just what that's, it's a, that's like. beautiful, man. And the maybe there were facets of that, you know. It's like every mm. there's do it goes up every level if you want to think about it spatially yeah i you made me think of a very very deep memory of psychedelic experience where i could kind of just it's like because of the no time thing it was like i could see the constant ping pong of duality of in consciousness uh at a rate at a speed that was in that, like it was undeniable it was like oh so underneath it all this is what consciousness is actually going through f the whole goddamn time and this is why life like needs to keep going maybe because yeah. it keeps us it's sane. The kinetic energy yeah i just thought of that like man maybe yeah again we put ourselves in the pods don't we <laughs> We just don't see that part of the matrix. <laughs> Man, and that's my whole thing. I've seen things so differently lately, and you think you evolve, and you know, and then I look at me like six weeks ago, I'm like, what an idiot, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, it's a spiral, right? right You're always coming right. back around to seeing the previous but, version. But, but that's why lately. we that's why we fall, Master Wayne, to learn to pick ourselves back up, right? That's right. That was no, a terrible right. Michael Kine. I'm but, Michael Caton. <laughs> I'm Michael Caton. I love that. Brandy, please jump in. Talk, uh, cut this duality and bring in the third. Yeah. Bring in the Trinity. Closer. There's always the. There's always the third. There's always this unity, and you know, like we're always spending so much time. It's like we've got to be one realizing no you already are that's by default, by default you are and if that's all creation god whoever wanted us to be then we wouldn't exist the point was to keep creating keep thinking keep going with it see where this can go so it's like you should never limit yourself with what somebody tells you because to me, it's like conflict is creation, not just like a war, even though they use wars, but conflict is creation. When two different opposing forces come together, they create a spark, and that spark is the third thing, and that third thing yes. is independent, and it contains both elements, and now you have created a world of its own, and that world is going to do the same. Yeah. So conflict creates why. Why creates the next generation the next dimension the next level the next step the next world the next galaxy so it's all yes an in inner thing but we express it outer and we just there's no sense in stopping the expansion just create and what you create can be just as beautiful and imaginative as you want or you can listen to these people who give you this crap that they want you to create this egregore or this little gray et which they conveniently have always given you pictures for so there's no need Come on. yep kill you in your sleep so it's like why why not put a bow on his head and a little you know tutu and let let that man be happy let that gray be happy go against take gray and kill kill the narrative Kill the narrative. Kill the narrative. That's a great I'm name for the that. episode. That's, I was about to say, you just named the episode. <laughs> that was awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> or like narrative killers tonight at seven. Yeah. <laughs> Tune in. <laughs> this toothpaste in your house you are using right now will kill you and your whole family. Find out tonight at nine. Find like six a.m. You're like, what the fuck do I do? So, do I brush my teeth or not, dude? Just tell me what is it. If it's that detrimental, right? And they do it at the end of the last longest commercial break. Have Asshole. you been breathing air yeah. again? Oh, oh God. God. You're absolutely yeah, fucked. Find out tonight at night. I recently oh, heard that fucking now, like, rainwater, they're at least saying that rainwater, any place on Earth, is now dangerous to drink because of, thanks. of course, what we have done to our atmosphere. Thanks, it's Obama. Very, yeah, thanks, yeah. Lope. Obama. Listen, you guys, this was epic. Brandy, I'm sorry that there was some like 
like mic problems. We should like fund you a mic, like get you a mic yeah, at we'll some point because we we'll need you on more shows. This was epic, you know. Absolutely. Um, I love you guys. I really appreciate you coming on. Please tell my audience where they can find you. Brandy, talk um, real close. <laughs> I feel like I'm whispering into the, you know, like telling you a secret. But no, the only place I'm at is um, on Twitter, and that's at AKA uh, underscore Brandy Renee. Cool, cool, it's a great cool. Twitter. Well, Brandy, thank you for, for being here, and I'll definitely love to get you on more. And, uh, yeah, our please go follow Br uh, Brandy on Twitter because she has a lot to share, and she's yeah. very outspoken like I am. That's why I love her tweets. Mm -hmm. And she just puts it all out there, and it's great. Uh, Brandon, please, for anybody that doesn't already know, please uh, share. I, thank you so much, first of all, for doing this. Brandy, you're a delight as always. Andy, again, a delight as always. Thank you so much. This is awesome. Brandy and Andy, I love this. Y'all should do a show and do a detective duo, and that <laughs> writes itself. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, expandingrealitypodcast.com. There's a link to a Twitter on there, but I'm fuck all on it. So, you know, I'm not... <laughs> I'm taking like such a massive chunks of breaks from social media. I feel like I've never been happier, but I'll run and post something. So if you see something post too, it usually posts because I post a one thing and it goes to like 12. So I'm Hell not yeah. over there. It just like my, my little ghost is anyway. So uh, expanding reality is the best place to find me. Uh, go check that out. It's, uh, it's over there. There you go. Thanks again, man. This is fucking awesome. This is always fun. I love this topic. To, I love I love bringing up the idea of, like, let's do a UFO roundtable because I know it's going to go the distance in many directions. And, uh, yeah, we definitely delivered tonight, I believe. This was really fun. We were supposed to have another guest with us, our friend Scott. And, uh, Scott, if you're listening, you can always come back for a round two for sure because yeah. I think uh, Scott would have been a, a very, very – awesome addition to this group as well so uh yeah until maybe a next time maybe with some more people we'll be doing this more often because this topic is just coming up over and over again and there's there's just not enough to say there's so much fun to, to have with this so uh yeah everybody thank you for listening and watching and go check out my beautiful friends places and uh podcast and follow brandy and all that good stuff and see you next time Thanks for listening to this episode of the Deep Share Podcast. If you want to hear more, then hit that subscribe button, follow me on all the social places, and remember, think for yourself, but don't always believe what you think. Till next time. Human sacrifice, dogs and cats living together, that's hysteria. Enough, I get the point. <laughs> you have meddled with the primal forces of nature. <laughs> and you will atone. What do we know? What do we know? If I know what we know, then I can tell you what we know, and if someone else knows, okay? <laughs> <laughs>